All right, so welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us. Uh, my name is Jenny Kim. I'm the Assistant Director for Talent at the Research Park. Um, and I am very pleased that today we will be having um, our very own Senior Human Resources intern, uh, Molly Aguilar, speaking to you today about um, how to make the most of a research park internship and kind of an internship overall, but kind of focusing on her internship at Research Park. Uh, Molly is a student at the School of Labor and Employment Relations and is pursuing her master's degree in human resources and industrial relations. She graduates this December, so this next week will be her last week. Um, but before she graduates, she wanted to share some of this, some of what she's gained through her internship. Um, and after graduation, she will begin her full-time career with PepsiCo, where she will work as a human resources representative at a Frito-Lay supply chain site. So we are super excited for her um, about that. And um, so without further ado, I'll pass it over to Molly to share her insights. All right, awesome. Sounds good. Thank you for the introduction, Jenny. Hello, everybody. I just want to reiterate my thanks for you all to join me today. Um, like Jenny said, I'm a grad student, so we work on a very different schedule from undergrads, so I didn't even realize today was reading day. Um, so I hope that you utilize your time wisely, of course, study, good luck on finals, but thank you so much for joining me today, and I hope that you find some of my tips and tricks helpful. Um, whether you are a current research park intern or you want to pursue a future internship at the park, I really think that you'll find some of, the tip, some of these tips very insightful. So thanks again. And without further ado, here we go. All right. So first, I just want to run very quickly through our agenda for tonight. Um, so I'll start off a bit talking about myself. You know, humans, we're selfish. We love to brag about ourselves. Um, and then I'll move into a bit of an overview of the research park. Um, for those of you who maybe are not as familiar with the research park and you just want to learn more about, um, I just wanted to make sure to provide some context for you all to familiarize yourself with what the research park is and what resources we have available for students. Um, next, I'll talk about how I got here to the research park. Um, I'm going to debunk some myths. Um, I think I have a very unconventional story in terms of how I ended up as an intern at the research park. Um, so hopefully that provides you all some hope if you are someone who is still currently looking for that next internship position. Then I'll touch base on what I currently do as a human resources intern. And then the meat of our discussion today and what I truly hope you find the most beneficial for your learning tonight is some internship best practices that I have just found to be tried and true for myself and really led me to a lot of success at the research park and in my professional endeavors. And then we'll just wrap up with some few key takeaways. But before we get into all of that, um, I just wanna encourage you all to introduce yourselves. Um, feel free to utilize the chat. Um, please tell us your name, your year, your major. And then please answer this question, which is what is something that you hope to gain either from a current internship experience that you have, or what is something that you hope to gain from a future internship? Okay, we have my queen Jane stepping up. <laughs> Thanks Jane for introducing yourself. And I also agree, definitely work at the research park. It is a 10 out of 10 experience. I would even go far as to rate it a 12 out of 10 experience. There's a lot to gain from here. I'll just give it a little bit more. We have Molly, who is another fellow Enterprise Works intern. So, okay, awesome. So I'm getting a common sense, which is what I anticipated, is that you're all looking to really develop some skills, whether that's specific to either your major, um, something that you're pursuing in the future. That is definitely something that I do touch base on. And okay, and then we have Brittany, welcome. Looking to expand opportunities. Okay, awesome. So I really do hope that you find my tips helpful for you all today. Um, I definitely touched base on some of that skill development piece and just in general, um, sharing what kind of opportunities we have available at the park. And so I will move forward with sharing that wealth of knowledge with you all. Okay, so I just wanted to just share a little bit about myself. Um, so as Jenny stated in my introduction, I am a candidate to get my master's in human resources and industrial relations. I am a student at the school of LER. Um, just quick plug for anyone interested in HR. It's a great program. We recently were ranked number one in the nation. So 
a huge LER fangirl. I'm so happy that I chose to pursue my education here at the U of I. Um, and then I also got my bachelor's from U of I. I graduated in May of 2019 with my bachelor's in industrial organizational psychology and Spanish. Um, actually, that picture next to my headshot is of my family during my graduation date. Um, just a fun fact, I stand at a whopping five foot tall, I know, scary, terrorizing. terrorizing. Um, and so the rest of my family is really short. <laughs> and I, I just think it's so funny to see us all lined up like that. Um, but from left to right, I just want to give a quick shout out to my mom, my aunts. Um, to my right in that picture is my younger brother, Franklin. And then is my grandma and my younger sister, Susie. And then if you look really close between myself and my aunt, there's these two little fur creatures. Um, those are my fur babies. Um, on the left, I highlight them. The left is Mojo and on the right is Snoopy. Um, so it was just a really special event to have my entire family there present for my graduation. Um, so definitely a moment that I cherish. And then specifically my role here at the research park is that I currently work as a senior human resources intern at Enterprise Works. Um, if you're not familiar with Enterprise Works, that's okay. I go into a little bit more in depth explaining what that is. Um, and then I started here in the fall of 2019, so September of 2019, and I will wrap up very, very shortly next week. Um, it's crazy how fast time flies. Um, another fact about myself is that I am a first generation college student. So I am the very first in my family to pursue um, higher education. I'm the first to get my bachelor's. And now I'm just so proud to say that I am the first to get my master's. Um, everything I do, I do it to serve as a model for my younger siblings. Um, and it's just really cool to see that my younger brother is a student at the University of Illinois at Springfield. And my sister is a student at the University of Illinois at Chicago. So our family has a deep presence in the U of I network. <laughs> and then as for my hometown, I am from Elgin, Illinois. Um, that's a northwest suburb of Chicago, if those of you are familiar with the Chicagoland area. Again, I am a huge dog lover. I'm a firm believer in manifestation, and I am manifesting that I will have two dogs in the future. <laughs> and then along with that, I am a soon-to-be California girl. I, I still can't believe it. I'm still in shock. But as Jenny mentioned in uh, my introduction, I will be moving to California, to Modesto, California. And that is where I'm going to start my full-time career with PepsiCo, um, specifically working out of a Frito-Lay supply chain site. Um, for those of you that didn't know, PepsiCo actually is a whole huge conglomerate company that is composed of Frito-Lay, um, Pepsi beverages, and Quaker Oats, um, the oatmeal. And so I'll specifically be working in the chip industry. And I'm just a huge fangirl of chips. You can ask my roommate, I eat chips Every day, every time we go to the store, I always make sure to support my company and get some Frito-Lay chips. <laughs> so I'm just really excited to be able to work at a facility that actually produces one of my favorite snacks. Alrighty. So next, um, I just wanted to provide you all, um, like I said, for those of you who maybe are not as familiar with the research park um, or what the research park is, I just wanted to provide you all with an overview of that. Um, so specifically, the Research Park is a technology hub. We house over 120 companies, and all of them focus on some aspect of research and development. Um, in fact, the Research Park is located in the south area of campus. So if you know where the State Farm Center is, all of that is like Research Park territory. The I Hotel, that huge area in the back of campus that's kind of far <laughs> by like FAR, PAR area. Um, that is where the research park is located. And then specifically, like I said, I work out of Enterprise Works. And what Enterprise Works is, is our university's incubator. So that houses all of our startups, which all focus on science and research based um, corporate research. And again, going into that next point, the research park does focus on corporate research, not academic research. And so something in my role that I'm constantly debunking along with my boss, Jenny, um, is that at the research park, there are no academic assistantships, like research assistantships that students can pursue. Um, we actually focus a lot on the internship opportunities and not just internships, paid internships. 
I want to say the very majority of our internships are paid and they're paid very well, if I do say so myself. <laughs> and so if you are someone who is looking for a research assistantship, I highly recommend that you look through either your college um, affiliated with your major or just pursue those. I believe there is a um, there's a resource for research specifically. I'm totally blinking. I've been here way too long. I'm sorry, y'all. <laughs> but that's definitely something that is an opportunity elsewhere. But again, reiterating that at the research park, it's about internships and even full-time job opportunities that we have for students. And then the last quick fact about the research park is that we have um, a total of 2,200 employees. In fact, we are the third largest collective employer in Champaign County, and we have over 1,300 full-time working professionals, along with over 800 student interns that work here. So it's a pretty large community. I'm very happy to be a part of it. And there are definitely lots of opportunities for those of you still on the job hunt, which we will touch base on as we move forward. Um, so next, I just wanted to touch base a little bit about um, how I got here. Um, I think I have a very unconventional story. Uh, another myth that we're constantly debunking about the research park is that it is a place that's only, there's only opportunities for people who are STEM majors. So a lot of the engineers, the computer science majors, um, yes, there is a lot of opportunity for them. But something that I wanna emphasize is for those of you who may not come from a STEM field, there are still plenty of opportunities available for you here at the research park. Um, like I said, I majored in psychology and Spanish as an undergrad, and even now in my master's degree, I'm getting my master's in HR. None of it has any correlation really with STEM, and I still managed to find a home here at the research park and very fortunate that this was my first internship. Um, so just a little bit about myself, I had no previous internship experiences, and that's kind of embarrassing to really like be honest about that as someone who's a master's student and you assume that a master's student has their life together, but no, we really don't. <laughs> but um, yeah, I had no previous internship experiences. Once I had decided during my undergrad that I wanted to pursue human resources, one of the first things that um, one would obviously think is, okay, let me do some job shadowing. Let me score an internship so that I can start developing some skills and really highlight whether this is something that I truly want to pursue. Um, so I spent the duration of my junior and senior year really trying to score an HR related internship experience. But honestly, it just came with no luck. Um, it was a very tough time. Um, I, it was just really hard for me to score anything. And then I soon realized that it was because of the way that I was really marketing myself. <clears throat> I think Something that goes a long way, um, just as a tip for you all in terms of interviews, is to really learn how to cultivate your story and talk about yourself in a way that really highlights those transferable skills, especially if you're like me and you're coming from maybe a background that doesn't necessarily line up with what is what you're pursuing. Um, but I think those transferable skills really get you far and those leadership experiences. So what I lacked in not having internship experiences, I made up for in the fact that I pushed myself throughout my undergrad to really be involved in the community. Um, so I have this graphic here, very intentional, <laughs> starting from the bottom, moving up. Um, as an undergraduate, I actually um, was a member of Gamma Phi Omega and they are a Latina oriented sorority. Um, I had joined Gamma Phi Omega my second semester of my freshman year which is pretty much when I started to really push myself like, okay, Molly, you, you need to get involved somehow. This is a very large campus. You need to somehow make this place your home. Um, because like I've said, as a first generation college student, it's, it's very daunting um, attending a school like the U of I that is a predominantly white institution. And I did very much feel lost and I had a very hard time kind of finding my niche. And I'm very fortunate that I found it in my sorority. Um, and it's within that role and becoming a member of that organization that I really did develop um, in terms of my leadership skills, taking initiative. I joined it as a freshman. And then by the time that I was a senior, I had made my way up to an executive board level position. 
Um, so I started off and I was my I was a fundraising chairwoman. The next year I was the academic officer in charge of um, tracking my members' grades and making sure that everybody was at our required GPA um, for our national standards for the sorority. And then yes, by my third year, um, my senior year, I became the recording secretary. And as an executive board member, I learned a lot, oh my gosh, a lot <laughs> about conflict resolution. Um, I was a member of an organization that was 20 plus members deep. And when you have that many women in a room with strong personalities, there's bound to be conflict. And so I, I did gain a lot about mitigation strategies, um, conducting healing circles in terms of when we had very difficult conversations that needed to be had in order to move forward and progress as an organization. And then something else that that led me to was then to wanna pursue an opportunity to give back to my community at large. And so what I did is that I applied to become an executive board of the United Greek Council. And what the United Greek Council is, it's our overarching council for our 26 plus multicultural Greek letter organizations here on campus. Um, that number 26 might be off. It's been a few years <laughs> since I was very active in the community, um, but it's a very large community. And in that respect, I was able to serve as the vice president for communications. And so um, I learned how to cultivate newsletters. I made sure to constantly push resources to our Greek letter organizations and our members at large, whether that was professional development opportunities, volunteer opportunities, um, I like to push our events that we had going on back then, whether that was um, fundraisers on the quad or professional development series that the organizations themselves were putting on, like resume reviews, mock interview workshops. Um, those were all things that I, I really liked to push to make sure that our members were still having their professional development adhered to. And I gained a lot. I served on that board with nine other women from various cultural and ethnic backgrounds. And it was just really fun to work in a group with really strong women and to come together and put on awesome programming for our council. And so those were, I credit the Greek community to a lot of my leadership experiences because I am very thankful that I had those experiences and I can look back on and think on those and those experiences are really the ones that I leveraged when I was starting to get interviews for internships and future jobs. And so I'm very thankful to have had those opportunities. And then um, just for some work history, um, that's my leadership and my RSO involvement. Um, <laughs> moving into my work experience. So I had a friend who kind of poked poked fun at me because she's like, Molly, you, you've basically worked in every capacity that a student can work at the campus. And I was like, what, what are you talking about? And she's like, yeah, like you've worked everywhere, which looking back was kind of true. <laughs> so when I was a freshman, um, my very first job on campus was at the ICE Arena, um, a really fun space. Um, it was kind of my, my first real job. Um, my actual first job was a pizza delivery girl, which is not that glamorous. Getting paid tips just sucks to be very candid with you all. Um, so this was actually my first job at the ice arena where I was getting paid. Um, I was able to see the hockey games and get paid for it. <laughs> so that was really fun. Um, but it was from there, I didn't really last long because I started to work there my first semester freshman year. And just being first generation, I didn't really know how much I could handle in terms of balancing um, my feelings of kind of frustration of the coursework being very difficult, not really feel, feeling like I belonged. And so I unfortunately did decide to leave that place of employment and give myself the next semester to really get involved in the community. And then after that, I pursued employment at the Illini Union Bookstore. I worked there during the rush period, which is like when they mass hire um, for students to start working there during the fall and spring semesters because there's a lot of book orders, of course, that come through. And uh, I worked there for maybe like the first month of the semester. And then unfortunately I was not kept on um, for after the rush period, but still really good experience. Um, and then after that, I highlight the Lina Union Rec Room because that is honestly 
the job where I did grow the most as a leader and where it really highlighted why I wanted to work in human resources. And so I started off in that role as a counter service attendant. And then I was then, I worked in that role for a year. And then after a year, I was promoted to be a student lead. And the student leads within that position are very much a supervisory kind of role. Um, the manager really leaves, <laughs> she leaves the establishment at like eight o'clock and the rec room is open most days. Um, well, at least back then it was open until 1130 or even midnight. And so for those three or four hours as a lead student, I was in charge of the entire establishment. And if there were any problems, which let me tell you, there were always problems. <laughs> I was the one that was in charge of taking care of them and making sure that things were running smoothly and efficiently. Um, and I really do think that customer service rules, if you haven't worked one, like you should have worked one at least once in your life. Not only does it build character, but it really just teaches you how to deal with people, especially difficult confrontational customers. I've had my fair share of people yell at me and throw money at me, throw their I cards at me. And it's just, it's really difficult to just stand there and have your customer service voice on and just take it. Um, but it, I think I really did grow a lot from that. And along with that student lead position, I was able to kind of serve as a mentor. And so once I voiced to my, man, my manager at the time that I wanted to pursue HR, she went out of her way to really meld the role to cater to my interests. And so something she allowed me to do was to start interviewing our next batch of incoming counter service attendants. Um, and so I was able to start the entire HR process basically through that role. And who would have thought working at a bowling alley <laughs> that I would get my first taste of HR. Um, and so in that respect, I sat down with the supervisor at the time and we selected people based off of their schedules. Um, we asked a few pre-screening application questions and then we highlighted the ones who we saw were best fit. And then from there, we selected some to come into interview and they gave me full power to interview the people, which I was like, wow, that's crazy. They're giving me all this power. <laughs> But because I was very familiar with the role, it, it just made the most sense at the time for me to take that responsibility. And then from there, I was responsible for the training, the onboarding period for these new hired employees. And then um, I think my most proud achievement of that role was that three of the people who I had selected and interviewed and developed ended up being promoted to student leads upon the time that I left. And so it's just very, I was very proud to see like my little babies <laughs> really develop as employees and take on leadership roles thanks to the training and development that I provided them with. Um, and it just really emphasized to me like why I do want to work in HR. And so I really credit so much success and thankfulness to working in that job. Even though, let me tell you, it was not my favorite job. Probably one of the worst jobs I've had, but gained a lot from it. <laughs> so still thankful for the opportunity. Um, and then the next thing that I highlight is Title Max. Um, so Title Max is a family company of auto loans. And so what I did in that role, I served as a store manager um, for one of our stores in Palatine, Illinois. It's another suburb um, in the Chicagoland area. And I was contacted by a friend. I was a recent grad. Like I said, I had no internships. And so I was like, I need to do something productive with my life. And so very fortunately, one of my friends reached out to me. She asked me, hey, Molly, I, I know you're going to grad school soon, but is there any chance that you're interested in looking for a job? And I was like, yes, let me hop on that bandwagon. Please employ me. And so she referred me um, to this store opening because they were looking for someone who was bilingual. And so I was able to hone in on that skill. Very fortunate that I grew up bilingual. I can speak Spanish fluently. Um, and that really came to an advantage in this role because Palatine had a very large Latinx population and they were missing out on a lot of business because the manager, the general manager at that store at the time could not speak Spanish. And so there was a huge communication gap that I very luckily was able to fill. Um, again, not a glamorous job. Um, when you're dealing with people's money, they, they get very disgruntled very fast. Um, and so that's unfortunately, oh, Mary Kate, you're in Palatine? Wow, I'm just saying that now. I worked there. 
but um, yeah, when you when you're handling people's money and with title loans, it, it was just a very difficult job sometimes. Um, having to call people and say, "Hey, where is the payment?" Um, it's just something that I realized that I don't like. I, I'm not a sales kind of girl, um, and so that's something I gained from Title Max. But still, a lot of leadership and responsibility, and just serving as an advocate, at least for people, because um, just growing up. In a personal note, I grew up uh, of low socioeconomic background. Um, and there were many times where my mom did have to get a personal loan just to get us by. And so I felt oftentimes that I really connected with the people who were coming in to Title Max to get a loan because they were in a very desperate moment in their life. They needed some help. Um, and so at least the bright side of it, despite the nature of the job, at least I was able to help someone in their greatest time of need. Um, and it, it just meant that much more, especially when it was someone that I had to communicate with in Spanish, um, just because it just felt like it was that much more special and impactful to be able to help someone in that way. And so all of that long winded jazz, just to explain how I ended up at Enterprise Works. Um, so fun fact, Jenny, who is my manager right now, is <laughs> she talks about how something that stood out to her about me when I applied to this role was the fact that I worked at Title Max. And she made a comment like, oh, if she survived Title Max, like she can survive anything. And I, I highly agree. Yeah, I, I do think so. Um, the nature of HR, it's a little, it's a little hairy sometimes, I'm not gonna lie. And so to have had those experiences where I've dealt with conflict resolution and like mitigation, having really strong communication skills have all come really in handy. And I think being able to talk about the impact that I had at the store or at the rec room or within my sorority is something that really made me stand out. And so when it comes to an interview, um, I didn't even know I was being interviewed by Jenny. Um, it, the way she had emailed me, it just sounded like she wanted to have like a one-on-one, -on -one, like 30 minute chat. In my brain, I didn't connect that to be an interview, but um, I, I still treated it as such. Anytime you're connecting with an employer, treat any and all interactions like an interview because you are still selling yourself. So it's so important to know how to tell your story. And so, yeah, something that I did was just talk about my leadership and the transferable skills I brought to the table and what I could bring to the Enterprise Works team. Um, and I'm just fortunate enough to have done that successfully. I mean, she liked me, I'm here now. <laughs> and so I'm just very grateful for the opportunity um, and to have had an impact at least on this team as well. And so I hope that that gives you all a sense of encouragement, especially if you don't come from a STEM field. There is a space for you at the research park. All right, so next, I um, just wanna talk a bit about what I do as an HR intern. Um, and so just to give you all context, yes, I did start in fall of 2019. And then everything was still in person back then, but I have had the very unique experience of having had that in-person internship and then to have had that really change from one day to the next to be completely online. And so some of the things that I'll be talking about um, were relevant in an in-person environment and some of them are more relevant in a virtual world. Um, so I'll try to make that very clear, but just wanted to make that distinction from the get. <laughs> And so one of the things that I do primarily is I manage the hiring process for our internal intern team. Um, at Enterprise Works, we range anywhere from about 15 to 20, 21 interns um, on a given semester. It just depends on our need and how the team's graduation dates line up in terms of how large or how small our team is. Um, but the really cool thing I think about Enterprise Works is that there are many functions within our intern team. So for example, I work as a human resources intern, but some of my peers that are on this call serve as graphic designers. We have communications interns, we have event coordinators. We even have Austin here, who's our new lab manager, who he fixes everything that's going wrong at Enterprise Works. And so it's just really cool to have an impact and to have the opportunity to select people for very different roles. Um, so that's something that I, I gained a lot from this role. Um, when I first started it, it was very kind of small. 
And then as I was promoted to then senior HR intern, I took control of completely managing the entire process from the time that I update a job application to the time that I make it live on our job board and then selecting people's, um, reviewing their applications, first of all, and then selecting the people who I think would be best fit for an interview. Um, and then from there, I also get to have some input on whether or not we should accept the candidate as a member of our team. Um, so I really do get to see that whole entire process go <laughs> from start to finish for like eight different positions. Um, so it can be overwhelming, um, especially when we need to have more, more hiring done, um, but it's still a very gratifying process and it's just a great way to connect with people. Um, and so the next thing is that I help connect our campus talent to the 120 plus companies that we have at the park. Um, so this one, it was very different when we were in person versus when we're now in a Zoom world. Um, so back when we were in person, some things that I did when I first started um, working with Jenny is we would have research park pop-up hours. And so that just meant that we would table at one of the schools on campus. Um, sometimes we would go to the information sciences school. Um, other times we were at Lincoln Hall to try to target different kinds of students because that's always something that we want to emphasize is that it's not just for STEM students, it's for everybody. Um, there's opportunities for you no matter what your major is. Something that the research part really highlights is hiring people based on their skills and what they bring to the table. So if you take anything away from this in this whole workshop, take that away at least. Be able to very well tell your story and to lead with the skills that you bring to the table. And that's definitely gonna make you stand out from the crowd. Um, so along with that, um, I helped a lot at the career fairs. So back when we were in person, yeah, we have um, the Research Park Career Fair is a really big event. And lucky for you all that are here today, we actually have one coming up in the spring. Um, I'll provide more information on those events later at the end of the workshop, um, but those are events that we do have going on. Um, in the virtual realm, we have a presence at almost all campus career fairs as well. Um, some that we really have a strong presence in, for example, are the ACES and LAS career fair, to name one. Um, for geese, I believe not as much, um, but really when we show up to these career fairs, it's to show up as a resource booth. Um, so if students come up to us, we are really kind of that liaison that talks to the student and based on what their interests are or what skills that they're looking to develop, we connect them then to one of the 120 plus companies. Um, so I think that's something that's really fun about the job. It, it can be really difficult. Um, there's a huge learning curve coming from day one and there's all these companies that I have to know X, Y, and Z about it can be very daunting. Um, but it's just about learning to use my resources and leverage my team. Um, and that has really helped me in terms of being able to help students, um, which is always something that I look forward to having an impact and being able to connect them to their next job opportunity. And then something else that we did in this virtual world was that we started offering research park office hours. And so what those were, we would offer them weekly on Wednesdays and Fridays. Um, they were a little bit more intimate than a career fair. I, I acknowledge that a career fair can be very daunting. You're one of like hundreds of students who are connecting with this recruiter. Um, but we decided to offer these office hours as a way for students to have more one-on-one, -on -one, um, basically career advice <laughs> in a way. They usually would connect either with someone like myself from the HR team or Jenny who has more of a full-time um, employee perspective. And in general, it's just always to be able to help students. And then something that has always been involved in the nature of my job is updating the Research Park job board. So here's, gonna, here's my job board plug. <laughs> if you are still looking for an internship, whether that be for spring 2021 or even summer 2021, please do keep an eye on our job board. It is constantly being updated like Jenny said at the beginning, we posted like eight positions within the last two days. Um, and especially keep an eye on that during your winter break because that is when most, not most, but many opportunities are going to start opening up. Um, it's just the nature of the, of the research park. All of our companies hire independently. So the job board is just a comprehensive resource for you to see what's available. 
once you click on an open um, job position, then that job position should take you to how that company individually does its hiring. Usually it'll lead you to their um, personal applications, whether that's a portal that they have through like, for example, State Farm has a portal, or for us, it'll just take you directly to our application form. You submit it and then me or someone on my team reviews it. Um, so definitely keep an eye out on that. I believe that the resource is on the chat as well in terms of, I believe Jenny shared that at the beginning. Jenny, if you could share that one more time, <laughs> just so that the people can see it, um, definitely check out our job board. And then the last thing that I just wanted to touch base on is um, community building. So something that's been very difficult for all of us, I would say in this new virtual world is feeling like you belong and being able to connect with people. Um, we acknowledge that it's been very difficult. Uh, motivation has just been almost non-existent. And I, I feel that I, I definitely have felt that some days as well. Um, and so something that Jenny tasked me with doing was to help develop some sense of community so that our team could feel well connected. Um, in fact, most of the interns that are on this call that I have helped hire, I have not met them at all in person except for one time. Um, I reviewed their applications online. I interviewed them through Zoom. And the only time that I was able to connect with some of these people is because I decided to give our team care packages. Um, I, to me, it was very important to show my team that we appreciate them and all their hard work, especially amidst the pandemic. And so something that I went out of my way to do was to cultivate some care packages for them. I wrote them like some handwritten notes, uh, just thanking them for all of their hard work. And then I was able to bust out my very first job skills of a pizza delivery girl. <laughs> and I was able to relive my delivery girl days and drive all around campus to hand deliver those to my teammates. And that was very fun um, to at least have had that one touch point with them. Um, I know that it's not easy to do it right now. Of course, you were safe wearing masks and all of that jazz, but it was still nice to be able to connect with these people at least in person one time while I was able to. All right, so I've been talking for a very hot second. The next tidbit that we're going to be reviewing today is what I like to so cleverly call Molly's Internship Survival Guide, Intern Best Practices. And so this is just what I have found are the best tips and tricks in my personal experience that helped me to be successful here at the research park. And so with that, I'd like to pause and again, ask you all a question. And the question is, what are some best practices that either you currently follow or maybe what are some best practices that you would like to follow or maybe you're going to start following to make the most out of an internship experience. And so feel free to write that on the chat. Jane, that's a really good one, being able to connect with people, whether that's through online games. I think that's a really good one. We have Kevin, yes, having a checklist of assignments. I am definitely a checklist kind of girl. It definitely keeps you organized and on track to get your projects done. <laughs> Scriblio, for those of you that don't know Scriblio, I highly recommend that you use it. It's really fun. I'll give it another minute in case anybody else wants to share something that they follow just to make the most out of an internship. Yep, definitely Jenny asking leadership about priorities within your role. I think that's also a really good best practice. All right, so these are definitely things that I will touch base on. Um, I hope that you find at least one of these best practices helpful for you. And that hopefully if you don't already use it, that once you learn it from here that you can go out into your internship and put that learning into action. All right, so my first best practice that I have for you all is about setting clear expectations. And there's quite a few things that go into this um, in regards to setting some expectations. The first thing I have for you all is to establish communication preferences with your reporting manager. 
So what that means is you need to decide what method of communication you're going to use with your manager. Some managers prefer that you send them an email at the end of your shift and you give them an update about what you completed during that shift. Um, some would prefer just a quick text um, update. Others will prefer a call. Some of them may ask you for a weekly check-in and that can be through a Zoom meeting or maybe even also a phone call. Um, so along with that, it goes in terms of establishing the method of communication that you're gonna use to communicate with your manager and the frequency of communication. I think it's so critical to establish this right off of the bat as soon as you start within your role so that you know what the expectation is of you and so that you are aware of when you can go and contact your manager. Um, just knowing when um, are they going to be clocked in during the same time you are, do your hours align. Um, I think having those method, those channels of communication open and clear on both ends is going to be extremely crucial to your success. Um, along with that goes into talking about project and assignment expectations. Um, so this can vary. Like I've said, um, I can only really speak to Enterprise Works because every company at the park will do this differently. Um, some will hire an intern solely to complete a project during either a semester or during the summer. They're given just one concrete or maybe not so concrete project assignment. And that is what they're expected to, to work on through the duration of their employment. And perhaps at the end of it, you're expected to turn in some kind of deliverable. And so what goes along with that is that let's say you are an intern and you're given you have a project related um, assignment and that project assignment is just a very vague business problem. And you being the intern are tasked with providing a solution to solve that business problem. It seems pretty vague. And so I think something that I have learned not only at Enterprise Works, but even in my experience at PepsiCo is to just ask a lot of questions, <laughs> ask what you're expected to deliver at the end do they want a website? Is that what your deliverable is? Do they want a pamphlet? Is it a poster board? Is it a slideshow deck like what I'm showing you today? What is the expectation? What has been done in the past? And who are people that can help point you in the right direction to get the answers that you need? All of these are things that you really should be considering in terms of your communication and having that conversation with your manager when you're setting the ground rules, basically. And so along with that goes to be honest with yourself and with your team about your capacity and how much you can handle. I know as students, sometimes we like to bite off more than we can chew because of course, we're all students at the U of I. We're all very, very much go-getters. We have high initiative, um, but I think it's really important to take a step back and reflect um, and recognize how much you really can handle and I think the awesome thing about the research park, at least what I have found, just given my, my previous employment experiences, is that it's very flexible. As long as you're communicating with your, with your manager or the site director at your place of employment, a lot of them are very, um, very understanding and at least I would say compassionate in terms of if you need to take a day off, a personal day because it's just too overwhelming, that's okay, they understand. They also understand that academics are a priority and that always comes first. So for example, let's say you have a week where you have three midterms and you just have not had the time to prepare adequately for them. As long as you're communicating with your manager what's going on and keeping them, keeping them in the loop uh, on your life updates, <laughs> I think they're all very understanding and will be willing to give you that time off. But you have to, be, uh, you have to communicate. Um, those occurrences as they come as well. And so I have found that honesty is really the best policy and it can only get you far. <laughs> and so along with that is be willing to learn. Um, I think sometimes we also put too much pressure on ourselves as an intern to feel like you need to know everything when in reality you don't. The, that's what an internship is. It's an opportunity for you to learn, to develop a skill, to use this as a starting point. Maybe you're kind of interested in this role, in this um, occupation, let's say, and this internship is your first taste of it. Give yourself grace. You're not gonna be an expert right off the bat. It's gonna be overwhelming when you first start. 
you don't really know the team, you don't really know the flow of the workday, what, um, what programs the company uses. For example, um, we use Microsoft Teams at Enterprise Works, And so that was a learning curve, um, seeing the development <laughs> of Teams being established for us and trying to learn and where are the files kept. It's all a big headache <laughs> sometimes. And so give yourself a lot of patience, give yourself a lot of grace. Um, they understand you're new. And so just don't put too much pressure on yourself to like be perfect and to be an expert because inevitably you're going to learn so much more than when you first started. And so that's my, basically my tidbit on setting some clear expectations. I hope that some of that was helpful to you all. And then my next point is about networking. Oh my gosh, ask anyone in HR, they will just go on and on and on about networking and I am no different. I'm sorry to be a, a cliche, <laughs> but I think these are some three things that I have found are just some really good key points in regards to networking. So from left to right, let's start off with connecting with and connecting beyond your team. So like I've said, in the virtual world, it's been very hard to feel like a cohesive unit, to feel like you even know your team. And so some best practices are to find opportunities to connect with them. Like I asked in the chat, and you can tell that we're all in the same team because we all mentioned Scriblio. That's an awesome way to connect with your team. It's a fun little tidbit. You're given a, a mystery word and you have to draw it out and the team has to guess. I think there's a name for that game, but it is totally skipping my mind. Um, but that's just such a fun way to be able to connect with people. It doesn't take too much brain power or too much effort. And it's just a great fun way to learn about people. And you get to learn who the Picassos are in your team as well. <laughs> but besides that, another thing that you could even do is reach out to someone for a quick coffee chat, maybe 15 minutes just to check in um, and say that you wanna get to know a little bit more about their role. Um, maybe you're seeking advice on your project, connect with your team, that's what they're there for. And in terms of connecting beyond your team, I think that's something that's really awesome about the research park is that we are such a unique community in the sense that you can connect with any of these um, employers that we have. There's over 120 companies and so having that power basically is just so awesome because um, we have a joke within Enterprise Works that we develop our interns and we give them all the, sk the skills and like knowledge that they need. And then another employer at the research park nabs them from us. <laughs> and so it, it's really awesome because you're seeing your team um, develop and they're pursuing these awesome endeavors. Um, yes, Jenny, we train them on. Um, you see them pursuing these awesome endeavors. And so it's really cool that at the research park, that's something that's even encouraged um, to explore what is out there and to be able to work at these different companies is definitely a huge benefit of being an intern here. Um, the next thing I have is to find a mentor. Um, in terms of that, I just think that there's so much benefit in having a mentor. In fact, having more than one mentor is something that I am a proponent of. Um, just as a personal note, even for Pepsi, I had I was set up with three mentors and I went out of my way and I added two more. So I had like five mentors during my six week summer internship. <laughs> so I was very mentored up, but I just think there's so much benefit in that, in that someone, there's someone who can provide you with advice. There's someone who can like help give feedback on your projects. You can learn skills from them. You can just, it's someone to really lean on whether they are within your team, maybe someone else in the park or someone who's a professional at the university. I definitely encourage you all to highlight and find a mentor um, to really help guide you because there's just so much value in having one. And then the next last thing that I will talk, talk based on is uh, to leverage your fellow interns. And so this kind of goes with the first point of connecting with and beyond your team. But at the research park, you're joining a network of over 800 interns. That's a lot of power and that's a lot of brains to pick. Um, just as a personal um, anecdote for this one, when I first started as an HR intern at Enterprise Works, um, there was a peer of mine through LER who worked at Brunswick Corporation. 
Um, so she worked as an HR intern as well. And when I first started, I was just able to pick her brain on like some best practices that she followed, some advice when it came to um, reviewing applications and things of that nature. It was just really awesome to be able to have had a buddy, even though we weren't working in the same place, we were still in the same community. And it was just a really good experience for me to be able to pick someone's brain who had been in the role a little bit longer than me and who had a little bit more knowledge than I did. And I think that that's a huge benefit of being a part of this network. Um, even within Enterprise Works, I learned so much from my graphic designers and the communications um, interns that we have, whether it's just little, little tidbits about what they do in their day. Um, it's just fun to see what everyone is working on and how we all come together to um, create these collaborative collaborative efforts and make them come to life. Um, so I think that's really fun as well. Okay, and then another best practice I have is just titled broadening your horizons. <laughs> and so what goes along with that is just these four key questions that I want you all to think about when you're either in an internship or you're thinking about pursuing a new one. Um, just these key questions is, what do you want to get out of this experience? Um, that can be a full-time job or maybe some skills. Along with that goes, what skills do you want to develop in that role? For me personally, um, I thought I wanted to be an HR specialist and then in talent acquisition. And then I quickly learned that mm, there's more out there for me. I want to be an HR generalist who pretty much does a bit of everything. So really think about how that applies to your role. Um, along with that goes, who do I want to connect with? And this is just touching base on the previous networking slide. Um, there's so many people at the park that you have, an, you have an opportunity to connect with. So take advantage of that. And then the last thing is to think about what tools you need to be successful in your role. Uh, interpret that as you will. It's very different for any role. Um, for me in specific, it, it really is about knowing how to navigate the Research Park website and how to be able to connect people with the resources within that website. Um, so I hope that these four questions really help highlight something, maybe a light bulb turned on in your brain and it made you reflect on something in your role. So next is, uh, my last one is about projects. Um, and just these three key points. Uh, when it comes to talking about your project status and updates, over communicate, don't just communicate, but over communicate where you are in terms of your completion status. If there's a roadblock, communicate that with your manager, please <laughs> be very transparent. It's okay if maybe one week you couldn't make as much progress as you wanted, just make sure you're keeping your team in the loop. The next thing is if there isn't anything to work on at the moment, find something. Don't just sit there like a sitting duck, find something useful to do with your time. Um, I think there's a lot to be said of someone who's a go-getter and goes out of their way to either develop a project on their own or just find a way that's useful to use their time. A lot of the research park companies like to see that in their interns. And then the last thing is to just be vocal about where your passions and interests lie. Um, you never know where that can lead you. Maybe you can work with your manager to cultivate a new project even that is both beneficial to the company you're working for, but also meets the interests that you're looking to tap into. Um, so I think there's a lot to be said about just being very honest about something you're interested in and you don't know where that could lead you. All right, everybody. So these are just my last takeaways. I've been talking for a, a long time. <laughs> so I just wanted to leave you all with these three key takeaways. Um, so as an intern, whether it's at the research park or in general, always remember that you are not at all expected to be an expert. This is a learning opportunity for you to either tap into some new skills or just see what's out there in the world for you. There's a lot to gain from an internship. Next is never underestimate the power of a network because you never know where those connections may lead you, especially at a place like the research park. You never know what employer you're gonna talk to that's gonna wanna nab you from the enterprise works team like we often experience, <laughs> but it's all really great opportunities that are available. So really make use of the network that's available for you here. 
And then the last thing is that this is just one of many professional experiences that you'll probably have. So make the most of it, enjoy it, connect with your team, develop the skills that you can, and just have a blast while you can because the internship is not gonna last forever. <laughs> but I hope you all enjoy it. And I hope that in conclusion, you found this very helpful. Um, just some key things that I want to highlight is a few save the dates. Um, so like I mentioned through the presentation, we do offer research park office hours. Those will resume in the spring. Um, please note the date, Wednesday, February 3rd. That's our tentative start for the office hours again. Um, so my workshop was just the, what, the very first of our series called My UIRP Experience. If you're interested in what it's like to be an intern at the research park during the summer, please tune into our next one on Thursday, February 18th. It's at the same time from 5.30 to 6.30. Um, it's gonna be a panel, so there's a lot to gain. You won't just hear one person's experience, you'll hear from multiple. And then the next is the Research Park Career Fair. So if you are interested in working at the Research Park or maybe pursuing, maybe you do work at the park, but you wanna see what else is available for you, um, I highly recommend that you come to the Career Fair. That will be on Tuesday, March 2nd. And then my last thing is just to check out our job board and calendar during winter break. I cannot emphasize enough how much growth I see on the job board that happens from winter break to the start of spring semester. There's going to be a lot of spring and summer 2021 opportunities. So if you're looking, do not fret, just give yourself grace, wait, check out our job board and you will definitely find something. And so with that, I'd like to open it up to any questions you all have. Thank you so much for listening to me for the past hour or so. I really appreciate your time. And then the last thing, I just want to leave you all with my contact information. So if you want to learn about something about me, maybe you have a question for me personally, please feel free to reach out to me through email. Um, you can connect with me through LinkedIn. I'm an avid LinkedIn user. I love connecting with people. And then the last thing is, if you have any questions particular or specific to the research park, or you need some job or internship help, please reach out to us at uirpjobs at illinois.edu. Um, the entire HR team at EnterpriseWorks is responsible for managing that inbox, and we will be sure to get back to you. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, All right, thank you so much, Molly. Um, I know I know we've hit um, we're a little bit past 630 so if you do need to uh, sign off feel free to do that um, really appreciate all the great advice and I hope you all take it to heart um, but we can uh, take a couple minutes to if there are any questions um, feel free to unmute or type it into the chat I think don't think we have any questions so thank you Molly